Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Signal and welcome to our talk, which is building serverless Twilio apps with Twilio functions. We're really excited to go a little deeper into some of the fun new things we're doing with functions at Twilio. My name is Kat King. I'm from New York, and I have the pleasure of serving on the developer education team at Twilio, which means I help build our documentation platform, content itself, and training programs like Superclass that's going upstairs today. And I'm Martin Amps. I uh, don't let the accent fool you. I'm actually British. Um, grew up here. Uh, I'm the tech lead for the Twilio runtime, and I'm super excited to be here to have the opportunity to show you what the team has been building the past year, which is Twilio Functions. Um, so before we actually dive into things, a couple notes about this talk. It is a 30-minute talk, maybe a little bit shorter today. Um, we won't have time for official Q&A, but we'll tell you where you can find us later for questions. Um, and this talk is for developers and builders. And that just means if you're comfortable reading and understanding and writing a little bit of code, you'll do just great as we go through some demos. Um, and this is an interactive presentation. So if you have your mobile phones buried in a backpack or a purse or a pocket, Pull them out now because we're going to ask for you to send us some text messages to help us solve some pretty hot debates we've been having. Uh, and with that, let's get started. Yep. So Functions is a serverless environment for writing and running Twilio applications. Functions abstracts away physical infrastructure, allowing you to focus on what's important to you, your code, as opposed to things like physical, or, uh, physical infrastructure, VMs, and uh, op DevOps. Functions is all about helping you build applications faster, safer, and easier than ever before. Oops. Um, that's true, and this may be familiar to you. We did, in fact, announce the, announce the initial launch of Twilio Functions back in <coughs> May in Signal, where we made it rain emojis in San Francisco. Um, just to kind of get a sense of who's here, who has already done something with Twilio Functions by now? <coughs> Fantastic. So we've got some people. Some of you are brand new. That's great. We'll take some time to go through the basics of functions and then highlight some of the fun new things we can do with functions. Just shout out to Phil, because he actually built the emoji demo. So yeah. what's up, Phil? That's right. Uh, so are there any web developers in the house? Oh, that's me. To gauge. Good amount. 15. OK, so for you, the pain points of building with Twilio likely lies in the vast, messy world of working with the public internet. You typically have something like this today, where your business communicates with your customers via Twilio. However, when you're working with the public internet, uh, there's so much room for error and disruption. You have to worry about things like a clicker. <laughs> uh, look at these a lot. <laughs> yeah. okay. Ma managing capacity, SSL ciphers, timeouts, security, DNS outages, retries, latency, TTLs, and so much more. No matter how hard you work to make your application secure and robust, there's so much room for things outside of your control to go wrong. Uh, how many mobile developers do we have here? Things like iOS, Android. It's good. It's good. Be proud. Um, great. A couple. So let's, the rest of us who are not mobile developers, just imagine for a moment that you're an iOS developer, and you're really excited you want to build a brand new iOS app that leverages the Twilio client for iOS. So this is kind of the pain point that you, our iOS developer, probably know if you've built with Twilio. Um, you come to our quick start. And the first thing we ask you to do is download and configure a starter app, which is an SDK in one of six languages if you'll notice, is not Swift or Objective-C. So we're already saying, hey, set this up thing, thing up, please, in a web language. Um, and then you need to actually deploy that and expose it to the world, keep it running on a server somewhere. And so as an iOS developer, you can do that. That's not rocket science. But it's not where your strengths lie. It's not what you're wanting to do, which is actually build your amazing iOS application. So with functions, we kind of try to solve this and the pain points for web developers um, to let you interact with Twilio without going through this hassle of setting up a web app and hosting your own server. And we actually give you templates for getting up and running really quickly. Um, and Martin's going to show you how we do that. Yeah, let's dive in. Here's our demo time. There you go. There we go. Cool. So first things first, let's dive over to the runtime section. Uh, you should make sure you have this pinned, because you're going to want to be here all the time. <laughs> you can see that Twilio provisions on your behalf a subdomain. Uh, mine is laughingcow1917. And this is where all of our functions and assets will live. So we have an over into functions. We're going to we endeavor to create a sync token. Uh, the sync token is how we authorize our applications to use sync via a scoped authorization token. 
Now to do that, we need a sync service instance SID, a Twilio API key, and an API key secret. So let's quickly go and make some of those. I should open these in new tabs for expediency. So you can see we automatically provision a default service instance. Uh, you, this, you'll understand why shortly. We will naturally rotate this <laughs> immediately after the talk. There we go. And you can see that functions is now deploying this function on behalf. Uh, here's the code that you would have formerly had to write. Uh, it's available by the template. It's scoped to sync only grants, uh, but you could use IP messaging or whatever you want here. And just to prove it works, we'll hop on over to the browser. There is a Polish <laughs> token, apparently. I'm not fluent, so hopefully someone can confirm that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've just gone ahead and created a sync token in seconds, which is sweet. Now we're going to try and get slides back. Oh, I'll make slides back, back the other way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then there. Perfect. Excellent. So are there any mobile developers in the house? We've done that. We did that. We're now on <laughs> another slide. Oh yeah, one, one thing you saw probably really quickly is those templates are always there for you in your functions console. So if you want to get up and running with something that isn't that sync token, you can find it there. Absolutely. So here's a graph of cumulative requests since we launched Relay Functions. Uh, the growth has been phenomenal, and we're super happy that developers are doing so many amazing things with it. Um, you can see it's hoggy stick growth. <laughs> in case you're wondering, <laughs> this was not a brand approved graphic. <laughs> it, it was definitely me. <laughs> but uh, we're super stoked. Uh, so Kat's going to tell you a little bit more about what our community's been building. Yep. So community's been building some really cool things. And one that I'm a big fan of personally as a US citizen is ResistBot. And ResistBot helps US constituents contact their elected officials. I can send an SMS to ResistBot. And ResistBot will then send a fax or a hand-signed letter to my senator. So it's mm -hmm. making getting in touch and getting politically active really easy for US citizens. Um, and actually, is anyone from ResistBot here right now? No, OK. Um, so they're here today. And so if you get to meet anybody from there, they're an awesome crew. Um, and Jason, who's from ResistBot, told us that Functions has helped them power 1.2 million users to write to Congress and be heard. Um, and they've even added 750,000 constituents to the platform in the last three weeks alone who want their voices to be heard. And you can imagine that as things happen in politics, we get these crazy spikes of interest in contacting your senators. Um, Functions actually allows ResistBot to throttle their inbound traffic when there are those really large spikes and also helps them filter out some bad actors, which we think is awesome. We're so happy to see what they're doing. But that's not it. Um, so we launched Functions back in May, and we weren't finished with it yet. And as some of you have been building with it already, we're listening to your feedback and had some ideas of our own. Um, and Martin's going to tell you what his team has been up to. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So as you know, we launched Functions back in May of this year. Shortly after, we launched the template catalog, which allows you to curate much more complicated templates. We added fun support for things like assets, multiple functions, and environment variables. Next up, we launched one-click deploys. This vastly reduces the time to get up and running in production, as you saw with the sync token just previously. You saw in the keynote today, we announced NPM support, uh, which gives you access to 350,000 modules. So developers like yourselves can share code uh, from all around the world, which is awesome. And then today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the runtime client, which allows you to orchestrate functions and, and access your assets. In addition, it also provides easy access to sync, so you can persist in synchronized state easier than ever before. Let's dive a little bit more into sync. Yeah, so as Martin's getting up for his next demo, um, once again, if your mobile phones are still away, we really do want you to participate. <laughs> My team has been having a pretty heated debate over a question that we are calling the greatest <coughs> question of all time, the biggest debacle of all time. We are. Um, and we Martin's do. gonna help us figure out how to use runtime and functions to solve this problem. Yeah, so I hear it's been quite a heated debate. Um, so we get to get this solved for you. We, uh, we've already touched on functions today. Uh, so let's take a look at assets. Assets are ideal for things like photos, 
uh, music files for whole music, but also for static applications, uh, sorry, single page applications. So we have an index file and a style sheet here pre-provisioned. Now let's just take a quick look at that. Those. And we can see the greatest question of all time, <laughs> which we'd like to solve for Kat today and her team. Uh, if you text this number right now, it's not actually going to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and wire this up. Uh, and hopefully, by the end, this graph's going to move in real time according to your votes. And it works like half the time all the time, so <laughs> just keep that in mind. We're going to start with a Hello SMS template because we're going to be responding to or handling SMSs. We're going to call it cat's debacle resolver at the SMS path. We're going to disable the signature check, which means that any of us can hit this endpoint and it'll be completely unprotected. Uh, typically, you want to leave this on, which means only Twilio can access this. Uh, so you can see the default message method signature here has a context, which houses your environment variables and also a pre-initialized Twilio client. Next up, we have the event parameter. This is uh, your post parameters and your get parameters merged into one. And then we have the callback function, which allows you to signal to Twilio that you're completed handling this request. So the new part is the runtime client. You can see we have this global here called runtime, which is available for all of you today. We're going to get sync, which is using that default instance that we, we saw earlier. We're going to access our documents. We're going to get the votes document, which is just a JSON blob. And we're going to fetch it. And then we're going to handle the message body. And if you're insane and you decided to vote for tabs, we're going to handle that. <laughs> we'll just increment the tabs variable. And if you're not, like Lorna, a Vim user, we're going to implement the spaces. <laughs> and if this is far too overwhelming, we'll handle that and give you a helpful little message back. <laughs> Excellent. So with that, we're going to update our sync document with the new data. And tell, oh, actually, we'll be saying, we'll handle our, our errors. So if you return an error back to Twilio, it will uh, 500, that's on your behalf, which isn't ideal. And it will light up this debugger icon up, up here in the top right. So if you have an error, you'll see in real time that you've made a mistake. Brilliant. Now, assuming I didn't make any typos, this should work. So hopefully everyone has their phones ready. We'll give this a go. All right, so once again, if you're having trouble seeing it, uh, the number is 44 uh, four if you need wait. the code. Oh, we, we have another phone. critical step. Yes. <laughs> One more critical step. And you can see I did make a mistake. So here's the debugger icon. Perfect. <laughs> this is great. Let's go check out what that is. Here's the, the debugger. This is free. We even planned this one. Just what we expected. So that's because we didn't configure our phone number. So it's really was saying that the demo endpoint doesn't return valid message response, which is great. So here we're going to head on over to our phone number which we purchased earlier. It's a phone number from Bristol. And then on an inbound SMS, we're going to go ahead and trigger Cat's debacle resolver. Excellent. OK. Now this time, I believe it'll work. So that number, if you need the country code, it's 44-0117-254-363. Let's see if this goes. It's gonna go. Might, maybe, uh -huh. maybe. Hey, you have a digit missing? 
Really? Wow, that was an oversight. Yeah, three, two. Do we miss one? <laughs> wow. All right. Here. Yeah, we can just zoom in on that. Oh, we're still getting some. So I guess this is 01173254363. Do we see? OK, so we can see you guys are hitting this. That's great. That's perfect. And you can see we're timing out. In a debug. I will, yeah. I did warn you this works half the time every time. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. You are absolutely <laughs> correct, sir. You Thank went you. you win a prize. And that's a working demo. I'm just going to go ahead and test this myself here. You guys are not my unit test. <laughs> okay. okay, excellent. Okay, there we see we votes. Go. Brilliant. All right. Ooh. And we see the spaces are winning. Which is great. Which is great. My That's faith is see. restored in the Twilio community. <laughs> not that it ever wavered. And we have some, some debates. Good. You might be realizing you can text a couple times. Oh, oh dear. T <laughs> tab, tabs are it's catching getting up. close. It's getting close. Oh dear. All right. All right. Well, before Tabs catches up, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close <laughs> this. Kat, do, do you happen to have any other things you'd like us oh, to? Oh, I, I have a lot of strong opinions. So, okay. um, I think that rather than asking a this or that question, it would be fun to dig into doing something fun with sentiment analysis, which sounds very complicated. Um, but uh, I want to measure how the room feels about a statement with emoji. And my statement prepare yourselves, is dogs are far superior to cats. Okay, sorry, you feel how you feel. And that's what we wanna see where the room lies. Um, and so we're actually gonna do this really quickly, leveraging the new NPM support that Functions has that we announced in the keynote today. Um, and so what we're gonna do is I want to take an emoji from an SMS um, and figure out if it is a happy or an upset emoji about my statement and then do something fun with it. So there's a library, a, a new library called Sentiment that we're gonna use right now. That's fine. All right. So this is what we'll be filling out. Same phone number. Um, we're gonna not that phone number. Not though. that phone number, though. Uh -huh. The phone number you just sent a message to. Yeah. We'll leverage that. <laughs> um, OK, so the first thing we're going to do with using an NPM module is we'll go into the configure section under functions. And you see this is where our environment variables live. We can add environment variables if we want to for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but we have this sweet dependency section that will allow you to import NPM modules into your application. So I just hit this plus button. My module's name is sentiment. My version number is 401. And then we save it. And this deploys this so that now this mm -hmm. node module is available to my functions. And that's as easy as it is. I don't have to deal with package management myself. Um, it's just there for us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's worth noting that uh, environment variables are encrypted at rest and in transit to your function. And they're updated at runtime. So you don't have to redeploy if you want to change the environment variable. Sorry, Martin, I'm deleting your code. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> it took me so long to make that work. I know, I know, I know. Um, so, what we're going to do to bring this in is we have this sentiment that we can just require now that our function knows about it. And now we've got it. So what we're doing here is setting the sentiment variable constant. Oh. Thank you. Hmm. Wait. We call it data usually. Hmm? We call variable data. Instead of sentiment. Because you're overwriting the constant up here. Oh, so that's right. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Do you want to call it data? Yeah. Instead of sentiment. Yes, I do. Thank you. Hmm. So. I'm going to get rid of the sentiment. Thanks, thanks, Martin. Yeah. Nice. Cool. All right. Fix that up. Um, okay. So we're going to set our, our data to you sentiment. Key. The key. The key is sentiment. Yep. There you go. Yeah. All right. And so this event body is just this event that we talked about earlier. That's 
the message we get back from you is the body. And that's, that's just going to pass that straight to the sentiment module and let that work. Constant. Yep. And now we can have some fun with runtime. One extra semicolon. <laughs> Wait, say it again. Say it louder. I don't mind. Over here. Thank you. I'm a Python developer, so this demo is like fun for me. Can you just delete. say it louder? Because delete. I yeah, you delete the extra. Yeah. There we go. Yep, that's good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, all right, so we're gonna get sync again, and this time we're gonna talk to a list, and that list is called sentiment, mm -hmm. and then we're going to create a new list, and that's just sync gonna be. Items. We're gonna work with the sync list items. I'm going to create one of those. And that's what we create. Mm -hmm. And that has our data, which just reads from that data that we talked about. Nice. And then we want to deal with our callback. And this. No, it's one. Oh, and I'm going to also log this just for fun. Um, and here, we saw this before when we were troubleshooting. But this log, these logs down here will fill, and we can pipe anything to them that we want. So we'll get error messages, we'll get what function's doing, but I can also look at the list of things that people are creating. And then a good we develop would catch handle the errors. our errors. They would probably do it on the other block as a developer. There you go. You're good. Are you using tabs, by the way? Or uh, yeah. I definitely am using tabs. I have no problem about it. I thought space is one. No, that's, that's right. a good spot, yeah. All right, and our error. And we'll do a callback there as well. And error is null. Da, da, da. Clean that up. All right. So assuming. We caught all the issues, all my little typos. We're Might gonna deploy this function. This real pair programming right here. All right, so now we're back. So now if you can once again take out your phones, text to that same message and to that same number an emoji that expresses your feelings about the statement that dogs are, whoa, people like cats. Let's see. Uh oh. <laughs> Just for the dog lover, is it 0117? <laughs> three, three, two, five. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. There Ooh, we go. Like Four, the... three, six, three. Yep. All right. Give that a second. Wow. All okay, right. we're overwhelmed like with dogs. Dog lovers. And just to show Fantastic. off the uh, the real time streaming here, we can see the emojis that people are sending in. The crying cat. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> this is fun. All right. Yeah, you can see the cat leveraged the MPML just put here, which is awesome. So, to recap, first we built a survey with Sync to answer the most debated question of all time. Um, hopefully, your team can sleep easier now. I think so, yeah. Which would be great. Then, cat added the node sentiment module library, which helped us evaluate how the room feels about our canine and feline friends. Great. So, why functions? Prototyping. You have an idea, you want to test it out. You don't want to do the mundane grunt work associated with bootstrapping an application. You saw this earlier when we deployed the sync token. So your idea is just to gain traction. It needs to scale. It needs to provide a good, consistent experience for your customers. Because Functions is built on the Twilio cloud, it can scale effortlessly to meet demand in real time. It's secure by default. So you saw this earlier with the checkbox. You don't need to worry about renewing your SSL certificates or validating the request truly came from Twilio. Instead, you have to focus on what's important, your customer. Seamlessly integrated with the Twilio runtime, it makes it trivial to access assets, functions, and sync. Awesome. So we hope by now, with that really quick overview, you are excited to get started writing Twilio functions yourself. So a couple ways you can start doing that. Um, you can go check out the templates in the console that we showed you. You see we have SMS, voice, sync, a whole host of other ones. Um, that'll get you up and running really quickly. Uh, you can take a spin over to our documentation where we have a getting started guide, list of frequently asked questions, as well as some debugging tips for working with functions. Uh, you can contact us, join our Google group, and be connected to the network of functions developers we have. 
Um, and come explore functions at Superclass, which is running in the same room as the main session today. Um, and Martin and I will be there later throughout the day to mm -hmm. answer your questions about functions. Mm -hmm. I'm Kat King. And I'm Martin Epps. Uh, thank you so much for attending our talk today. Thank you for fixing my demo. Highly <laughs> appreciated. Uh, and I think we have a few extra minutes, so feel free to find us. Otherwise, definitely Superclass. All right.